Hello, welcome to Andale Homestead. I'm Ann. I'm so glad that you're here. Today, we're going to be cooking. Yep, we're joining in with the Soup Timber collaboration that Leanne from Mennonite Farmhouse, I'm going to link her down below, Mennonite Farmhouse has put together and joined all of us for every day of September that we can bring you some soup recipes and I'm excited about that. I'll also include in the link below all of the other collaborators that are joining this collaboration and I will be able to put my recipe in there for hamburger soup. So thank you for being here. Let's get started on our soup timber. <laughs> If you're making the hamburger soup directly from store-bought items, it's okay, it tastes good, but you'll need a pound of hamburger, you'll need some tomato paste, you'll need some tomato sauce, I use a small can, a can of sweet peas, a can of corn, and sometimes a can of tomato soup if you feel like it, and or if you don't have any tomato paste along with some, a can, which I don't have any in the house right now, but a can of stewed tomatoes, a little salt, onion, and garlic. So you can still do this from items from the store. I'm just blessed to be able to have items from our garden, our land of plenty. You might see a little mess in my kitchen, but y'all, I live here. <laughs> so we're gonna get started with our hamburger soup. Now, I've done hamburger soup for you once before, but whenever I'm asked to join a soup collaboration and I think about how busy everyone is and all these fancy things that people do, which is wonderful, I'm thinking quick and easy. And this is quick and easy. So let's get started a little bit. First of all, I'm gonna add my hamburger. We get our hamburger from a meat market that uh, gets some fresh beef and I uh, support some of the local farmers and it's it the taste is unbelievable. So I'm gonna get the hamburger in here and then I use a pound. This happens to be a pound and a quarter, but you can use a pound and get away with it. Also, um, I have some onion. You cut up like one medium onion. And I, my husband was so sweet. I'll try to show you where he was cutting up this onion for me. And um, I just put the onion in there right away. And then we're gonna cook this up just a little bit. And I'll bring you back in just a second when it starts browning up. You just put the hamburger in there, stir up that onion, and in just a couple of minutes, I'm going to use my chopped garlic. I'm going to put the chopped garlic in there. This is fresh from the garden. I'm so proud of my garlic. I know y'all have some great big garlics, but I really enjoyed my garlic because it was the first time I ever grew it, and it tastes so much better. And this information about the garlic is from Sandy from Suburban Homesteader, Wyoming, Arizona. She said that if you let the garlic sit out on your counter for about 10 minutes, then you can let it sit out more. But if you let it sit for 10 minutes, it reacts with the air and somehow gives us better flavor. So we're going to try that today. Now that the hamburger is starting to brown a little bit, and when you use really good hamburger, oftentimes you don't even have to pour the grease off because it doesn't make very much. This is, this is looking like I might have to drain it, but um, most of the time of the meat that I get from this particular market, I don't even have to drain the stuff. So here's the garlic that's going in. I used probably three or four fresh cloves you can use as much as you like. And if you don't have fresh garlic from the garden, you can just get the, gra the grated garlic. I buy it in a little jar from the grocery store and put that in there, it's very good. It's just not from the garden. Well, our hamburger is just about done. 
the onions are starting to get soft the garlic is softening up as well this is fast and easy you guys it's really fast and easy so i have a quart of my home grown from the land of plenty tomatoes but you can use a regular larger can of stewed tomatoes from the grocery store if you don't have that so we have a quart Here's my little dragonfly. <laughs> I have a pint of tomato sauce that we canned freshly. And one thing that I didn't have was tomato paste. I didn't have any tomato paste that I had made by myself. So I'm using a can of tomato paste to try to thicken it up a little bit. And um, I'll bring you right back when I get it all stirred up. There is a little something something that I'm going to add to it this time. This is the first year that when I canned all of our tomatoes from the Land of Plenty, which they're slowing down now. We don't have as many tomatoes coming. But I did keep the tomato skins and dehydrated them. And they smell glorious. But I've also been told that they're a thickener as well. So that mm, they smell so good. So that when you put them in your recipes, it's kind of like putting a little flour in there that's tomato flavored and I'm excited about that. So I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons, just a little bit, to add a little extra thickening in there. Let's stir it up a little bit and you can see that it's starting to thicken because of the um, tomato skin powder and the can of tomato paste that we put in here. But I'm going to add for a little extra a can of corn. I didn't can any corn this year and I'm going to learn how to do that. But in the meantime, you can use it from the grocery store, a can of corn, and I just get the generic brand, and a can of sweet peas can of sweet peas that adds such an extra flavor to it and gives it so much good juice mm. all right let's get this warmed up Ooh, it's gonna be so good and honestly once it's warm you know you don't really have to do a whole lot more to it because it all joins in with all the flavors. I did not drain the hamburger because it ended up not having hardly any extra grease in there, which is great. I do add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce and just a, just a touch. I, I don't really measure anything and normally I don't even put it in a tablespoon, but about a tablespoon, I guess. And then Although I have salt in the tomatoes and the tomato sauce, I'm going to add a little bit of soy sauce in here. Just about a half a tablespoon of soy sauce because you don't want to make it too salty. Oh, good. I just spilled that everywhere. Well, wouldn't be a video if I didn't drop something, right? <laughs> Let me clean that up. I'll bring you right back. There is another stuff that I forgot to tell you. When you cut up your onion, your medium onion, save the bottom piece. And even if you have house plants or anything, or even a cup of dirt, you can put this bottom piece of your onion down in and it will grow onion greens. It's not gonna probably grow any bulbs, but it will grow onion beans. So easy, totally simple, no waste, that way, you know, we can grow our own food, right? <laughs> All right, so we have the can of corn and the can of peas in here. We have put a little teeny bit of soy sauce, a little teeny bit of Worcestershire sauce. And now for the taste test. It doesn't really have to sit for a terribly long time for it to be yummy. That's why in just I mean, honestly, this is practically real time. It, in 10 minutes, you've got a really good meal. And my grandchildren like it too, so that makes it good. Mmm. 
It doesn't even need any salt, y'all. Mmm. That is so good. Let's get some in a bowl and we'll do another taste test. <laughs> That's my favorite part. Honestly, the longer you cook it, the better flavor it has. It's really good the next day. It really is good the next day. I mean, it has even more flavor. But because usually when I fix my hamburger soup, I'm kind of in a hurry and I don't, I'm tired, don't have anything else to cook, been out in the garden all day long where the grandbabies have been running all over the place. My husband's tired. And so we just cook it up and eat it right away. These are my mama's china. I'm happy to have her here with me in one way or another. All right, so we have a little bowl here and then I grated a little cheese. I'm gonna put a little bit of cheese on the top of it. See if you can see that. Mm -mm. Ooh, I don't wanna spill it. Yum. So this is my hamburger soup. I topped it with cheese. You could put a little bit of uh, sour cream on top of it if you would like. But this is going to be my brunch today. <laughs> I want again to thank Leanne from Mennonite Farmhouse for including me in this wonderful collaboration. Oh man, that's good. Mm -hmm. That is good. I hope you get a chance to make this. I'm gonna sit down and eat the rest of my soup. But in the description, I'm going to add all the other channels that are in this collaboration. You do need to comment on every video because there will be some wonderful things that you might be able to win at the end. And Leanne is doing a big live on October 1st where she's randomly picking through any video that might be out during the day, uh, during the month of September. So give that a shot and check out the playlist that is on Mennonite farmhouse. I'll put her link in the description. Comment on every, on every video. Make sure that you don't say the same comment every time because uh, YouTube will think that you're a spammer and they'll delete you. But if you put a unique comment in every video for Soup Timber, you have a chance of winning a hundred dollar gift card and two $50 gift cards. Man, she's making this thing a hit. Ooh, I'm so excited about that part. And I love it, and I love her, and I hope that you support her. So thank you so much for coming to Andale Homestead. I'm Ann, and I hope that you have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you soon. Love you. Bye-bye now. Mm -hmm.